following program is sponsored by PokerStars.net. Previously on The Big Game, the loose cannon has the pros feeling helpless so far. Pretty sure Gonzo's going to win the sand somehow. And Tony G has not been himself. Should have better. Wow, Tony G has lost his heart and his commitment. Scott Seaver's frustration was building all week. This is just not my day. Scott just dribbling away. Before finally getting cleaned out by Gonzo last night. I'm all in. Oh. Oh my God. Tonight, find out if Gonzo tries to break the bank. I'm about to kick it up here. He's setting the bar like up here for every loose cannon. Or will greed get the best of him? Good hand. The cannon's wild ride concludes now. Oh, turn the red back on because I'm going on tilt. <laughs> Welcome once again to The Big Game from Las Vegas. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Huff, where tonight some of the best players in the world will finish up the week fighting for the $1 million that remains on the table in our state-of-the-art poker room. Biffer's been playing solid poker, but still hasn't found the cure for the common cold deck. He's down almost 60 k The table's been questioning Tony's hot commitment. You can't question his results. He's up over 41 k this is Scott Seaver, the Loose Cannon's new favorite player. Scott gave him his last 35 dimes last night, and now he's stuck 100 large. Daniel's been dealing with Murderer's Row to his left all week. He stayed out of the way. He's still up 28K. 11-year NBA veteran Bobby Sura finally came off the bench to play some hands, but kept running into bigger ones. He's stuck just under 36. The Loose Cannon's name is Gonzalez Cannon. The Sacramento native has been crushing this game and plans to give any winnings to his family to help them recover from their recent financial crisis. Right now, Gonzo's up more than 125K. He's with Amanda Leatherman. Gonzo, you said you came here to kill it, and so far, you've definitely killed it. How are you feeling? I'm feeling real good. I'm fired up. I, I know I still uh, need to maintain my focus, stay humble. I mean, I'm, I'm real fired up. I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to play the game. Though. Is it on your mind to set a number that no other loose cannon can touch? Yes, definitely. Um, really? I'm, I mean, I want to definitely walk away with some money, but I also want the passport as well. So now that, you know, I see it, it's possible to set a number high, that's what I want to do. So, yeah, I, I want to put it out of reach. Well, it's looking good right now. Good luck. Thank you. The loose cannon has staked $100,000. He keeps all money above the initial $100,000, and the loose cannon with the most money at season's end earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth $50,000. This season, the loose cannon will not have the option to come back to try to win more. How does it go? Today is a good day. Oh, yeah, that's the Ice Cube song? Yeah. Scott is quoting an 18-year-old gangster rap song, which means it came out when he was eight. Action on Seaver. Pocket Queens. Maybe today will be a better day for Scott. He went broke last night. Makes it 1,200. Tony G calls with suited connectors. Biffer's out. Back on the cannon. He's had plenty to be happy about this week. He's barely lost a pot. Ace King suited for the cannon. Calls. Played a little ball, messed around, got a triple double. Sura folds. Daniel's getting six to one. Ace four. Ace four has bad reverse implied odds, but six to one is good enough odds for most anyone. Folds. What did I just do there with my brain? Change my mind four times? That seems no good. Where's the confidence? To the flop. Nine three deuce rainbow. Seaver's still best, but Tony's made an up and down straight draw. Seaver checks it. Tony bets 4,000. Over to the cannon. Out. The cannon's been floating the flop all week, and now he stops in a spot where he's typically supposed to. Seaver calls. Here we go. I thought Scott was going for a check raise, but it looks like he's playing deceptively to try to get even. Queen of clubs on the turn, and Seaver has hit a set. And he checks it. Tony checks. Still trying to set that trap. Ace of clubs on the river. Tony G has made a wheel. And Scott's trap has gone all Wiley E. Coyote on him. He's probably loving that ace. Scott Seaver cannot catch a break this week. Checks it. Scott's going for a check raise. This is not going to be good for him. Tony bets 10,000. The only question is, how much more will Scott commit to the worst hand? And Seaver check raises to 36,000. 
I'd say there's a 0% chance Tony folds. A fairly good one that he could raise, but the three clubs may slow him down. He just calls and he's going to win a big pot. Seaver shows the set and he's going to hate this. If it didn't come a flush, I would have got it all in. I mean, that's how sick is that? How <laughs> sick is that? How unlucky are you? It was sick for one of them. Tony G happy to pick up that pot worth more than 84000 And Seaver's tough week continues as we take a look at the big game rules. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit, then no limit after the flop. Lines are two and four with a 100 ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least 100000 but can rebuy for up to 500 k The first player to buy in for half a million this year gets a big game t-shirt. At least I checked the turn. I mean, yeah, you're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> Viffer will be under the gun here. <laughs> King Queen. I wonder if you bust the Viffer if you get his self-portrait t-shirt. <laughs> I want one. He raises the 1300 over to our loose cannon. Pocket eights. Cannons had plenty of playable hands all week long, and most of them have been connecting as well. He calls. Pocket threes for Sura. <laughs> Sura's had a rocky week in both senses of the word. <laughs> He'll come along. Ace five for Daniel. Out. Seaver out. Oh yeah, the club's alone. The club made you twenty thousand extra. Oh, I'm yeah. happy. Then I'm happy. He wouldn't check raise the regular ace. I don't understand the game. Enough. Ace ten for Tony. Tony complaining he didn't win enough on that last hand. Calls. Four players to the flop. Eight six nine rainbow cannon flops a set. This guy runs better than Carl Lewis. Yeah. And Tony G checks his gut shot. Viffer checks. Cannon checks. In general, I think it's a mistake to check that board. Sura checks to the turn. Ace of hearts, and Tony's made a pair. I'm open-minded, you see. And it worked out for the cannon anyway. Tony bets 3,000. Another perfect turn card for the cannon. Tony caught top pair and lost equity. Viffer's out, and we're back on the cannon. Raises to 9,000. Sir is out. Tony might consider making this call. The table's hardly seen any of Gonzo's hands all week, and Tony's got outs to a straight. Should probably just move in and see... See if you got the guts to call. He does. I can't win anything if I hit a seven. I'll take it here. Tony G folds. Wow. And the cannon's now up over 131K. <laughs> He's like, man, I wish I had a hand that good. Show us one. Pick one. Pick one. That one, he wants that one. It's an eight. Ooh, there was an eight on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is fun. Yeah, He's destroying the game. I know. Absolutely the greatest loose cannon of all time. We've been tracking Gonzo's play all week, and he's not allowing the pros to push him around. The cannon's still near the top of the pack with a 42% VPIP, but more importantly, he ranks second in calling preflop raises at 38%. Gonzo's seen a lot of flops and turns, and that's kept the pros off balance and earned him a huge figure without ever showing his cards. Well, he's certainly made believers out of this table. You still uh, working out and stuff? Me? Yeah. Yeah, every day. Action on Sura. I got nothing else to do, so it's easy. Right. Well, I mean, a lot of athletes, when they're done, they don't. But do you have a pension now? Does the NBA pay you a pension? Yeah, when you turn 55. Oh, he's only 55. So you got a couple years. Yeah, a few Three less. Years. Does everyone get the same pension, or does it depend? Yeah, it's like a thousand bucks a month for every year you played. Every year. So you played 11 years, so played 11 and a half, months. you got paid for 13. 13 for me, yeah. So it's going to count as 13 even though you sat on the bench for two years? That's right. Okay. 16. <laughs> but if you play that long, you got to worry about the pension, you did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Sura's just called with ace 10, and Seaver's going to raise it to 1600 with queen 10. Queen six of diamonds for Tony G. Tony G's in position, but he's dominated in every possible way. Calls. And somehow Viffer's dominated by Tony G. Six three, also in. Cannon's out. How much is it? Sir, it seems like he's been limping to avoid a three bet, but he's giving up the lead every time. Sir calls Seaver's raise, and we've got four way action. Sir has got half the equity four ways. To the flop. Seven ten seven, and Seaver and Sir have both made top pair. Seaver out kicked again. Viffer checks. Everyone but Scott drawing almost dead. Sura checks. This time checking's cool. Check to the razor. Have you checked? Viffer checks. I'm not going to check this one. I am going to commit to this pot. Tony G bets 3,800. Tony's taking a wild stab at this, and it'd probably work a lot of the time, just not now. Viffer's out. Sura makes the call. Bobby's been tight pre-flop, but seems to commit once he hits a decent pair. Seaver's been in second place all week long. 
and makes the call again here. Poor Seaver getting pipped, nosed edge. Another classic example now. King of clubs on the turn. That's a bit of a scare card for everyone, especially Bobby. Seaver's picked up a flush draw. Sura checks. And Seaver passes, as does Tony. Four of hearts on the river. Sura's in good shape, but I don't see him capable of thin value. You'd be right, he checks it, as does Seaver. Tony G with queen high, gives up. I got a 10. Me too. <laughs> How can his 10 ever be good? This is so sick, he's lost with the pip about 17 times in this whole week. Sura wins a pot worth almost 19,000. Every time someone has this, Scott has that, like right underneath. I doubt that's any consolation to Scott Seaver at the moment. Stick around, Railbirds. More big game on the way. Welcome back to the big game. Andrew Robles just entered the building as our first alternate. Robles got into it with Daniel and Tony G back in season one. It's always nice when everyone else gives action and stuff like that. But, you know, you can be the guy that doesn't, and it's all good. Call the clock. Bring your tricycle. Bring Ridiculous. It. I need Tony to come down, please. So if I ship it all in, do I get a bike? <laughs> like, at least, do I get a novelty prize? This could make for a real interesting final few hands if Robo gets in the game. Remember, there's more behind the scenes footage on the website. Hey, Tony, did you used to play basketball yeah. in Australia? Yeah, I did. You were really good? I was not good, but I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> he played. Just like poker. Yeah. I just battle. <laughs> Nines receiver. You should play against Bobby. What do you think? I should. I'm happy to play against <laughs> him. We, we should do like some sort of a show with him. Yeah. Play a little a three horse. Three-point shootout, yeah. Are you a good when shooter? Bobby gonna start I'm reasonable. Poker? I'm not sure if good. I mean, probably like not bad if there's no defense. Seaver called. Tony folds. Probably, I don't know, 75% from the three-point line. 75%? I think mean, that's not very high with no <laughs> defense. Biffer and the Cannon have called. Sir is in. He's like, yeah, whatever. It's pretty high by my standards. No, nah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not high. From an NBA three or? No, from the U Euro European three. Yeah, yeah. That's not high. That, that's Bobby Sura played in the NBA for 11 years, and he shot 33% from three-point land. 3-4 three, king on the flop. Two pair for the Cannon, and Daniel's up and down. I think it's like really good players can shoot close to 80%. <laughs> no, really? You don't believe it? That's There's, the truth. Sit in the same spot. Action checks around to Viffer. He checks to the cannon. Cannon must bet this with this many people in the hand. I'm going to bet you can't do 70. Fires 3,000. Uh, so, yeah, I would, I'm on your side of it. Sura folds. We go to a gym. Let's go to a gym. Let's, let's bet. Bet. I smell a season three feature. And Negrano will draw. We do, yeah, I'll bet the whole stack I can I can do. We'll have 100 shots in four yeah. days' time. I've got to make 70. Four days? <laughs> Seaver folds. Four days, I'll, I'll tell you where. I'll bet the whole stack. Want to take 20 shots a day? Put it up. Why can't we just go do all 70 in a row? Viffer folds. No, I mean, I'll, 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 we'll do 70 in one day, but we'll do it in four days' time. We'll do, but we'll do, it, we'll do it slowly. What's wrong with I right now? I need to... I've had a lot of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, don't drink and drive the lane. <laughs> Back to poker. The cannon's got two pair, and Daniel's going to draw to his straight. Four of spades on the turn, and the cannon's filled up. Gonzalez cannon continues to run like Godzalez cannon. Now it looks like Daniel's loading up for a bet. He might think he can blow Gonzo off his hand with a donk bet. Makes it 4,500. And it might actually work most of the time, but huffing and bluffing can rarely blow a full house down. I never bluff. <laughs> All right, Robo, come in. I'm leaving. Tony's off to start practicing his jumper, I guess. Back on the cannon. Just calls. I really like the smooth call by the cannon. He can let Daniel think he's just got top pair or a draw. River eight of diamonds. Daniel missed his straight, but since everything else missed, he might think he can take Gonzo off his hand. And this bluff is a $16,500 donation to the Cannon Family Relief Fund. Wow. Big blind, big blind, big blind, big blind, big blind. Since you've been so friendly about showing a card, I'm also going to show you one card. Okay? Let's see if this is the one. All right. Daniel shows a five. You get one card and one card only. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> Daniel's just blown any chance he had of not getting raised here. 
This guy makes a huge hand, gets bet into, and then a pro shows him the losing hand. This is unreal lucky. What would you oh, I should have literally, you can't raise, shot, that's mean. 34% <laughs> Viffer's right to laugh, this is ridiculous. Cannon stacking chips. There's the raise. Oh, gross. <laughs> Yeah. To 61 5. That just made it all worth it, right there. Oh, hang on. Viffer, you agree, right? That just. That was... And Gonzo looks like he's about to explode. The problem is, I literally I cannot call. So I have to fold. Another big pot for the cannon. I had six high. Yeah, that's why you had a re raise anyway. Come on. If you bluffed that, I know you did it. I know you did it. Well, he obviously didn't. He had six high beat, almost for sure. Gonzo's now up over 150k. Thank you, Daniel. The cannon feels destined to be here because of his ironic last name. However, the origin of his first name has much more meaning to his family. I'm, my name is Gonzalez Cannon II. I'm named after my father. And my grandfather, Oliver Cannon, was in World War II. And the way I hear it, he was in quite a bit of a jam in the war, where to the point where his life was at stake. And a couple of gentlemen came to his aid and rescued him. And the two gentlemen's name were, uh, one was Mario, one was Gonzalez. And my grandfather, he named his first two born sons after these two gentlemen. So my uncle's Mario Cannon, what's up, unk? And you have my father, Gonzalez. So it was, I'm just a product of some, some good people doing some big things back in the 40s. Gonzo's obviously a guy with some strong family ties. He told us he's going to use any winnings to help out his family after they were hit hard in this recent economy. And here's a look at the big cannon, Gonzalez Cannon Sr. looking on from the green room and loving every second of his son's success. Meanwhile, back at the table, Tony G's decided to call it a night with a $74,000 profit, and Andrew Robel has taken his seat. The 24-year-old has earned nearly 1.5 mil in tournament winnings and bought himself a BMW M tray as his first big poker purchase, which he totaled. Tray days later, Robel will begin with 200K. As you saw before, there was some tension between Andrew and Daniel last season on the big game. We'll see if any of that bitterness carries over into tonight's action. The actual start on the cannon folds. Big slick for Bobby Sura. Raises to 1,200. A six for Daniel. Out. Seaver folds. Jack six for Andrew Robel. He's out. And Jack eight for Viffer. Re-raises to 4,400. I imagine this is why Bobby's only raising less than 10% of the time to begin with. You can't really fold Ace King to a three bet in this game against these players, though. Sura calls. Daniel stretching his legs. Viffer and Sura to the flop. Four, queen, nine, rainbow. Viffer now with a gut shot straight draw. We'll have to see if he wants to continue with it. Okay, so you remember last season, right? We no, gave, I forgot. We gave Andrew a little bit of a hard time for not straddling. Yes. Do you think we should all like make him straddle, or do you think we should leave him alone? You know what I think. What do you think? We should just start some, st start some trouble? Yes. Ah, oh, man, there's an instigator. <laughs> Viffer checks. Sir with the best hand. And Sir checks. Turn. Six of hearts. No help to Viffer's hand. He may smell blood now that Bobby's checked. Me and Tony G ganged up. I didn't say time. be mean to him, but you can still straddle because straddling's fun and it makes the game better. But should we make him just just him straddle and no one else? No. Well, how are we gonna Why do that? Why would you then? do that? I don't know. I'm trying to prove a point of some are kind. Are you happy to see him? Yes. Me and Andrew Rubel get we get along fine. Yeah. Yeah. People don't necessarily think so, but yeah. Andrew had some choice words for Daniel in his blog after his last appearance. I wasn't mentioned. And <laughs> Viffer's bet six thousand. That's enough to get Bobby out. And even with that win, Viffer's still down $61,000. That's what you guys never know, right? No, I love it. We'll see if Daniel proves his point with Robel as the big game continues after this. Andrew Robel, especially from last season, you know, you guys all remember the big situation where he wouldn't straddle, he wasn't given any action, so me and Tony G kind of ganged up on him for playing slow and stuff like that. You come to my game and you're wasting my time. So you're okay with Tim being the only one who doesn't straddle in a game? He was kind of just verbally abusing me. You really? You're okay with it? Because I wouldn't feel. I'd feel kind of greasy about it. I mean, as a poker player, you're the right to call the clock whenever you wanted. Three, two, one. That's the first bluff that's worked for me in like, I don't know how long. That is How many right. in a row have I tried? 
And the bottom line is poker's a game of war, you know? And uh, anything you can do to get on someone's nerves a little bit or get to them a little, you're gonna do. So I wanted to make them uncomfortable because, hey, this is a battle for money. Yeah, I mean, there is, you know, a certain poker etiquette, but some people follow it and some people don't. There's no, you know, governing committee, like dishing out fines for people who don't obey, you know, poker ethics. Tony, high five for the assist there. I mean, I don't know, I'm just here to play poker. Turns out there is a poker ethics committee. They're ruling, hug it out. Hey, Daniel, mm -hmm. are you happy to see Andrew Robo back? Love seeing Andrew Robo back. Good, Absolutely. you guys made up, everything's good. <laughs> we, we, never, we never hate, I'll wait, I don't know if he hated me, but I never hated him. <laughs> he's a good boy. Oh, so he's like a dog. Ace dues for Bobby Sura. Folds. He's a good boy. Friendly competition. He's a good boy. Boy? Um, yeah. I'm that's boy. like a needle right there, too. No, that's not a needle. He's a good boy. Right, How old are you, Andrew? All right, son. I'm 24. So that's a what? That's still considered a boy. If I can be kid poker at 36, then... You're not. Hostess burn. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's raised to 1,200 here over to boy poker. 710 of diamonds. Anything they want to. Re-raises to 4,200. This is how good me and Daniel are. <laughs> He's three betting me with garbage, just to prove a point. Not just garbage, Daniel's favorite garbage. King Queen suited for Viffer, and he's got the best hand of the lot. Such a nip fold here. But I'll let you guys have fun. Very nitty. Not all that nitty out yes. of position against Robocop's rep. <laughs> Sounds like you had a big hand there. Everyone folds. So round one goes to Robo with the bluff against Negrano, who's been unusually quiet this week, but he is up. For most of the week, Daniels allowed the table to run over him, ranking last in all these categories. Since Negrano took a 107K pot from Tony G on hand 28, he's been playing passively. It's evident Kid Poker's been uncomfortable with his table draw, having three wild cards to his left for most of the week. After 28 hands, Daniels' profit was over 36,000. It's now dropped to just under 8K. He'll be on the button this hand, and Viffer will be under the gun with 8-6 of diamonds. Raises to 1,300. Gonzo out. Sura, 9-8, calls. Look at Sura getting loose, maybe trying to get unstuck. Negrano folds. Jack, 9 of diamonds for Scott Seaver. Calls. Surprised to see Seaver just calling out of the small blind. Robo folds. And there's a lot of domination going on here. Seaver, Sura, and Viffer will see at least three more cards. Trey, 7-7, seven, seven, two diamonds. Seaver and Viffer pick up flush draws. Seaver's his best, and he checks. Viffer bets 3,000. Everyone's got a backdoor straight draw as well. Sura's out. Action back on Seaver. Scott with the better flush draw. And raises it to 6,800. Seaver's semi-bluff raising with the best hand. Makes more sense now that Seaver just called out of the small blind, keeps his range wider, and he can rep a hand on a board like this. We know Viffer's dead to a pair of running straight cards, but he's likely to think his flush is live. Sure does. He makes the call. We're going to see a turn card. Jack of hearts. Seaver hits a pair, and now Viffer's drawing dead. Now that Scott's turned a pretty solid hand, he may feel like he doesn't need to bluff anymore. He checks it. And Viffer checks. Six of spades on the river. Now Viffer has a pair. All draws except for the four or five gut shot miss, so it's possible Scott could get a call if he bets. He bets 11,200. Scott's played this very well by checking when he hit the pair. His hand looks pretty airy. Can I get some help here? No help. I don't get no help. Why do I got to be the sucker to get you even? Say something. Like, what's your birthday? Who does your hair? Clearly no one. <laughs> you got me beat, I know now. Vipper calls. Got a jack. Well played by Scott Seaver. And it just cost Vipper $11,200 to find out he was right. That was the quickest you got me beat now call I've ever seen. So that pot gets Scott headed in the right direction. Still down about 122,000 overall. Meanwhile, Viffer looks like he's got Seaver fever. Baby, baby, baby. Never say never.
Welcome back to the big game where Scott Seaver has been getting the short end of the stick for most of the week. However, after getting the best of Viffer on that last hand, Scott took us inside his head as we go behind the poker face. So this hand is taking place towards the end of the session. People are loosening up a bit. I'm down a decent amount. Viffer is down a decent amount. And I think this is affecting the way that maybe either of us plays, but more importantly, the way we both think the other is going to play at this point. And Viffer opens under the gun to 1300. Bobby Sir calls from the cutoff, and I call from the small blind with Jack Nine of Diamonds. So the flop comes down, and it's 773 with two diamonds, and I check. Viffer bets out 3,000 here, and Bobby folds, and Viffer hadn't been doing a lot of betting in this spot, so I thought it might be a good shot to take a stab at the pot and see if I can just take it down here, but I didn't want to raise too big because I think if I have chip sevens or a full house, I would make the small raise as well. So I raised to 6,800. Viffer thinks for a bit, but not that long and calls. The turn, I make a pair of jacks, and I think and check, and Viffer checks back. The reason I check is because I don't want to bet and get raised and not be sure what I do. My hand has a ton of equity if I'm behind, and Viffer doesn't have a full house. The river ends up being a blank. I bet just over 10,000, and Viffer thinks for a long time. He clearly doesn't like his hand. He's trying to get a read on me. Say something. Like, what's your birthday? Who does your hair? You got me beat, I know now. But he ends up making what I think was probably a call with a very marginal hand, and it worked well for me that I returned this jack. Viffer made that call on the end when he rivered a pair of sixes, even with that win. However, Scott Seaver is down over $120,000, or a little more than one of Bobby Sura's watches. I'm with you. Just, just fine. <laughs> I knew when Tony left, I should have left. We were saying that the whole time. <laughs> With Tony at the table, your chances of playing a pot that could get you even go up significantly. Action will start on Bobby Sura and his $105,000 watch. He folds. Some nice bling bling. Pocket threes for Daniel. Raises to 1,200. Daniel hasn't been raising much, and Scott hasn't been messing with him much. King Queen offsuit for Scott Seaver. Reaching for chips here. And re raises to 4,200. I take back my prior statements. A six for Andrew Robel. Good to see you. Viffer folding. And the cannon, out. If I say this shouldn't be too tough a call for Daniel, what I am implying, Scott, is... He has good implied odds to call, and he does. No, I just meant that he's a calling station, but he does also have good implied odds. <laughs> to the flop. Seven, deuce, queen, two hearts, and Seavers made top pair. Daniel with the worst hand and out of position. Daniel checks. Seaver out flopped Daniel, and he's in a great spot where he can keep firing and will oftentimes get at least one call. Seaver reaching for chips. He's feeling it right now. Bets out 5,200. Negrano's got a heart, so his outs to his set are clean. And he calls. Daniel not ready to give up on the hand just yet. To the turn, 10 of clubs. Board gets even worse for Daniel. Still out of position. He checks. Scott should have no problem firing at this again, especially since more draws developed. Looks like he's gearing up to do just that. It does, 12,100. Now, it's always possible Scott could be double barreling, and then again, it's always possible he'll fire an even bigger bet on the river. Daniel folds, and Seaver's going to win another pot. This one worth a little over 32000 And if Seaver doesn't look all that happy, it's because he's still stuck huge. That's how we do it. You know, gets free raise, bet, bet. Internet poker. Takes heart and commitment. Seaver continuing to claw his way out of the basement, but he's still the biggest loser for this week. Meanwhile, the cannon has increased his stack tonight and now has almost 155,000 in profit. Bobby the Bus took down the season one passport with over 181K, so it'll be interesting to see if Gonzo locks it down or if he goes for the gusto. Right now, the OG original Gonzo is on his way out for a closer look with Amanda. You make me nervous. Nice She's so to beautiful. Meet you. <laughs> You're Gonzo Senior, huh? Yes. Nice. Who's that? Your father. My father, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get to come out and watch for a few minutes. Yeah. Not much longer left. That's true.
My dad never came to any of my poker games. Well, you never promised to buy your dad a house. Why do you think I didn't? So as the session winds down, action will start on Scott Seaver. Ace-queen offsuit. Scott maybe on a little bit of a heater. Raises to 1,200. Pocket fours for Andrew Robel. Taking his time as usual. Calls. Pocket nines for the Viffer. Re-raises to 6,000. We've got action. Cannon's out. Sura's out. And Negrano folds. Back to Seaver, the original Razor. We already heard Scott say he thinks Viffer's going to play differently, being that he's stuck. Scott's quite stuck as well. Makes the call. Got like 50 there. I hope. Robo wants a count. 25, 45, 50 more. Robo's checking out his implied odds. He probably wishes Viffer had more. Double checks his cards and calls. How come you didn't ask him how much he had? I don't know how much he has. You don't worry about him? You know I just never have a hand. I know Scott's losing every pot today. Oh, right. To the flop. Queen, deuce, ace, rainbow. Well, Scott's not likely to lose this one. Top two pair. Checks it. As does Robel. Fiffer's supposed to continue here, which should be good for Scott. And he continues for $11,000. There's not a lot to protect against, so Scott may just call and try to let Viffer keep hanging himself. And it looks like Viffer may have given up on this hand already. And it looks like more than a call coming from Seaver. Raises to 23,000. Robles quickly out, back to Viffer. Seaver has made almost a min raise, which can sometimes make it look a little bluffy, and this board is pretty dry, so it's hard to be raising with a semi-bluff, which means either Scott's got a big hand or nothing. And Viffer folds. Correctly. Seaver's back on the uptick, and he drags a pot worth over $53,000. You haven't had any ups. Me? No. No, none. You won the first time, didn't you say you flopped a boat or something? <laughs> Me? He had an NBA career. It's pretty decent enough. Welcome back to the PokerStars.net Big Game. We're close to wrapping up this session as we've reached hand 142 of 150 for the week. Action on Andrew Robel. Queen Jack. Raises to 1,400. Viffer, suited ace, calls to the cannon. Where'd you go to college again? Florida State. That's right. That's right. Cannon's out over to Sura. Pocket threes. Charlie Ward, Sam Cassell. Yeah, yeah. That team made the Elite Eight in the 93 NCAA tournament. Sura's called with two threes, and Negrano's in with King Queen. 10 3 for Scott Seaver. He folds. Played seven hands in a row. Had to let one go. Robo seems real impressed. Four way action to the flop. Six, three, king, two clubs. Sura's made a set here. Daniels flop top pair, and Viffer with the nut flush draw. Negrano checks. Robel checks. Good time to bet the come. And he does, 3,000. Bobby would do well to raise and start building a pot while he's got the best hand. In the NBA, Bobby shot 33% from three point land. 3 3 3, set of threes, total glitch in the matrix. Facing a $3,000 bet. Raise. Announces raise. He raises to 16,000. Viffer knows he can't be drawing dead, but he's probably not in good shape. Now over to Daniel. 16's about. And Daniel cold calls. Robles out. Action back on Viffer. Now, worst case scenario for Viffer, which it is, he's getting 25% equity against a set, which isn't that bad. And he's super short. I'm all in. It's all in. For 43,200, and now the action's back on Bobby Sura. Bobby's only behind the kings and sixes. He's getting almost exactly three to... What am I saying? He has to call. Uh, call. And Bobby does make the call. This should be a pretty clear fold for Daniel at this point. <laughs> what? What do we got? Huh? What do we got? Oh, I have a... I have a... Something. Just top pair. Your most likely hand here is three sixes. 
Yeah. <laughs> Three sixes. The king high flush draw. Who has that? That's that's you, right? You do, if you have kings and a flush draw, like, you're no, in. Actually, I think he's <laughs> and you've got you got three sixes based on your pause time. So I guess uh, since I can't be three sixes, Daniel hasn't put anyone on anything that should make him want to call. Huh? <laughs> Weird. Daniel folds. I have the flush draw. Yeah, I know. I that. hope you have three. You have three threes. Good luck. Good luck. Let's see what we got, gentlemen. I have the ace seven clubs. They're gonna run it once. Biffer's gonna need to hit a club or a running four five for a straight, or he will be felted. And if Bobby can win this hand, he'll be back in the positive. To the turn. Six of diamonds, full boat for Bobby Sura. It's over. Full house. I can't win. Gentlemen, I get to go home. I should love a Tony G. <laughs> Loose cannon. Let's see you, Viff. Viffer. Always Mine. a pleasure. Always a pleasure, man. But you, my pleasure. man, I got to shake your hand. <laughs> for <laughs> real? Appreciate it. Man. You done outplayed us all. Good for you. Appreciate it, man. Take it easy, guys. Later, Viff. Classy exit. So Viffer decides he's had enough for the week after dropping 150 dimes, while Sura now has a profit for the first time since hand number 25. The interesting thing to note is that the two amateurs, Gonzalez Cannon and Bobby Sura, are the only players currently showing a profit. The pros have taken a beating, but there's still time for some to finish up with a few more hands to go. The LC certainly had an exceptional week, and right now his biggest supporter is in the lounge with Amanda. I don't know if he knows this, but can you believe he's up over $150,000 right now? Well, it's kind of hard to fathom. It really right? is. It seems like he kept his composure. He's so calm. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> and you're so calm, so maybe he could set from here. Well, I'm struggling right now. I'm struggling. I'm holding my, I'm jumping up and down inside. That's awesome, though. Well, you're going to hang out with me and watch for a bit if you want. Okay, huh? all right. Good. If all goes according to plan, pretty soon Gonzo Sr. will be jumping up and down inside a new house. Extreme home makeover, big game edition. Action on Daniel, pocket kings. Raises to 1,200. Rules living with the fear. King six for Scott Seaver. Folds. Seven nine of hearts for Robel. Last time Robel was in position against Daniel, he decided to make a move on him. Looks like he could be considering it again now. Robel three bets him again to 4,200. Cannon folds. Sir is out. This time Robel's antics might come back to bite him. Robel's so tight, Daniel might think a four bet will get him some action. Daniel re-raises to 13,800. I assume this is where we'll see that tight Andrew Robel everyone keeps telling me about. Any second now. Should be a robo fold. You have like 170. Daniel doesn't like to count it out, but he will show his chips. And Andrew calls. Wow, he's really got it in for Daniel. Got to figure some history is playing a role here. 7 9 suited does have decent implied odds for snapping off kings. So Daniel and Robel to the flop. 4 10 ace, two spades. Daniel's still best. Always an ace on the flop when you have kings. Can't imagine either one of these guys is in love with this flop. Daniel's in a particularly bad spot because he's out of position. He checks. Robel trying to rep a big hand pre flop. Let's we'll see if he tries to steal it away from Daniel now. Nope, he's going to check. Robles treading lightly against his nemesis. The turn, queen of spades. This board just got even more gross for Daniel's hand. Twenty-two. He bets twenty-two thousand. Robo instamux. It's an awful board for two kings with no spades. <laughs> well, whatever. Whatever, I won. Haha. -ha. Daniel happy to capitalize on Robles' misstep. As it got worse, I bet. <laughs> Daniel gets a little revenge on Robles here while our cannon just a few hands away from a huge payday if he can hang on. We're coming right back.
Welcome back to the big game where the first loose cannon of season number two, Gonzalez Cannon, is closing in on a tidy profit and hopes it'll be enough to take home the NAPT passport as well. It's some much needed money for Gonzo, who says it will help his parents who suffered a setback during the recent financial crisis. Gonzalez Cannon Sr. looking on to see how things end up. Action will start here on Andrew Robel, a seven offsuit. Folds. Cannon, yeah. King 10. Calls. Cannon's limping. Maybe he's going to play a little tighter now, try to protect that lead. Sura folds Nergrano. Daniel with Dolly Parton completes. Queen five for Scott Seaver. Checks his option. The pros know the cannon may tighten up as well, so they may start taking some shots at him. Three way action of the flop. Eight king queen. Cannon's made top pair. Nergrano checks. Seaver checks middle pair. The cannon's hot streak continues. Cannon bets 1,500. Oh, God. <laughs> Daniel's out. He's not slowing down at all. Still betting top pair. I admire the gumption. And Seaver makes the call. We'll see if that call slows Gonzo down at all. Heads up to the turn. Eight of spades. Check, check. He does slow down. River, seven of clubs. Seaver checks again. Gonzo should be able to value bet this pretty comfortably. Cannon bets it. Seaver says, don't shoot. Cannon drags another pot. Shows a king. Show a king there? Yeah. What else is new? What else is new? <laughs> what else is new? How about an incredible run for Gonzalez Cannon, the cannon? This count might hold up. Loose Cannon caps things off in fitting style after dominating this table all week long. Gonzo will take home more than $155,000 while the remaining pros did not fare as well. Gonzo's posted an impressive number to beat for the NAPT Passport, but as we learned in season one, you never count your money till the dealing's done. Right now, Amanda's with a very happy Gonzalez Cannon. Gonzo, when this game started, did you ever think you'd be able to take that table for over $155,000? I'm speechless. I mean, I want to, I, I feel like dancing. I'm happy. I'm excited. You know, I'm humbled. But at the same time, I mean, I'm just thrilled at this opportunity. I'm glad I was able to, uh, you know, come out and, and, and play my game because I knew I had to, what it takes to be here. So I'm glad it's changed. You came definitely through. did. How much good can this money do for your family? It's going to do a lot, you know, get our family back on our feet and uh, moving in the right direction. So. Well, you can dance now if you want. Uh oh, let me stop. Don't let me stop. <laughs> Dad, come on out. Give him a hug. I'll cut all this up now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, Gonzalez Cannon has set a number that's going to be hard for any other loose cannon to catch. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night, everybody. For states, this is Huff saying so long from Vegas. I think one of the best players at the table was probably the loose cannon. He was in there, you know, mixing it up with raises, playing aggressive, check raising, doing some bluffing. I think people were a little befuddled and unsure what was going on. Just my hat's off to him, man. He, he really played like a loose cannon should. I was not intimidated. I didn't have any fear. I played my game, and it worked. He did everything right. That's what Boker's all about. I just won 155,200 bucks at the big game. 155, comma, two, zero, zero, exclamation point. The preceding program was sponsored by PokerStars.net.